Southern State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. Time to hashtag everything. We talk about all the fun, crazy stories on social media. From Instagram to Facebook, Twitter to Tumblr, or probably even Friendster. Join us each week as we explore the quirky side of social media. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. It's simple. It's simple, such a sad song. The one that, the one that we rely on. To get us, to get us. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am happy to be with you today to talk about some things that are trending in social media. The first thing, it, the first story is one that I see trending on Twitter and I imagine many other places, and it is that Katy Perry's uh, song, Dark Horse. Uh, was copied um was was copied from a a rap song a jury has found so um that was a very awkward intro i do apologize <laughs> so a jury has found that pop singer Katy perry um copied a 2009 christian rap song for her 2013 hit dark horse the associated press reports the decision was unanimous by a nine member federal jury in a los angeles courtroom on monday the jury concluded that the beat of the Christian song was original enough to be copyrighted. The verdict came five years after the Christian rapper Marcus Gray, also known as Flame, and two co-writers followed, filed a lawsuit against the pop star. Gray alleged Perry stole the beat and instrumental line from his song Joyful Noise to create Dark Horse. The main focus of the copyright infringement case was about the beat, not the lyrics. Gray's attorneys claimed it was possible for the defendants to have heard the song and presented evidence that it had millions of plays on YouTube and Spotify. Gray's album, which included the song Joyful Noise, was nominated for a Grammy. They're uh, trying to shove Mr. Gray into some gospel music alleyway that no one ever visits, said the plaintiff's attorney, Michael A. Kahn, during closing arguments. Perry's legal team argued that the song contains simple musical elements that should be available for anyone to use. They're trying to own basic building blocks of music, the alphabet of music, that should be available to everyone, attorney Christine LaPera said during closing arguments on Thursday. In their final verdict, the jurors found all six songwriters and all four corporations that released and distributed the songs were liable. The songwriters include Perry and Sarah Hudson, who only worked on the lyrics, along with Juicy J, who only penned his guest verse. Other defendants found liable were Capitol Records, as well as Perry's producers, Dr. Luke, Max Martin, and Circuit, who came up with the song's beat. The case will now go on to a penalty phase where the jury will determine how much is owed for copyright infringement from Perry and the other defendants. So that is, um, I'm always fascinated by those those cases because how do you determine if someone copied another song when, you know, do, do you do it consciously? Do you do it subconsciously? Have you heard something and it sticks in your head or is, you know, I mean, is it blatant copyright violation? It's, it's fascinating to me how all of that works, but uh, they must have presented the evidence in such a way that the jury just determined that yes, it was, um, it was copied from the 2009 song. So be interesting to again to see then where this goes in the next phase of this process let's move on to a happier story still music ish and social media related and it is um about rihanna well sort of about rihanna it is about rihanna's supposed doppelganger have you seen this on social media it is said that we all have a doppelganger, that we all have a twin somewhere in the world, and with the number of people in the world and the um, number of facial features available, well, I'm sure that that is true. Rihanna seems to have found her doppelganger on uh, social media, and she actually posted a picture 
which, you know, could probably be considered like a throwback picture of Rihanna. So she posted the photo and um, wrote, almost dropped my phone. How? And considering people are saying that the the two are, are identical, you would have to look and see if you think that they are identical. But uh, she apparently wasn't the only one doing a double take. Um, celebrities and fans alike took to the comments to express their utter shock and <laughs> many automatically assumed that this was the work of dun 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 face app the same app responsible for making everybody uh, everyone appear to be old so yeah the little girl that is in the picture could could definitely be um a younger rihanna she's a, a beautiful young girl posted by Rihanna on Instagram. And then, of course, people reacted, uh, as it said, celebrities and fans alike. People um, like Uzu Aduba, Lala Anthony, Shanina Sheikh, Dorinda Medley, and Miranda Kerr, among others, shared their thoughts on this, you know, saying, wow, and, you know, she's the little girl is adorable, which she is, but um, the resemblance is pretty questionable but then how the question the resemblance is not questionable the the resemblance is there the question is you know how did rihanna discover her little doppelganger in the millions of pictures on instagram that are in the world that part apparently remains a mystery but she did tag the little girl's mom in the photo which means that um well she knows where the picture came from uh we don't know where it is at any rate, um, the little girl is very cute. I wonder who she is, but at the same time, I don't want to know who she is because she doesn't need that kind of attention in her life. Although I guess Rihanna did tag her mom. So my question would be, A, have you seen the picture? And do you think it looks like a young Rihanna? She could play a young Rihanna in a movie, definitely, I think. And B, I wonder how it feels as either the mother or the daughter in the picture to suddenly have a picture go viral because a celebrity finds it and thinks that you look like them as a small, you know, as a younger version of them, which she does. I can't even imagine. Obviously, I am not a small child, um, but I, if I... Let's say if one of my nieces suddenly was viral on Instagram because she looked like a celebrity, that would... The internet is a weird place, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I can say. The internet is a weird place. But let's go ahead and, and move on from... Well, we're not going to move on from the weirdness of the internet because... This is the Social Media News Podcast, and we talk about uh, the internet throughout. So what else do we have to talk about today? Oh my goodness. Okay, so this next story is one that my husband forwarded me a link on Facebook the other day, and it starts out as kind of a normal um the news video a reporter is reporting that a home depot had to be closed down due to a bomb threat that was called in by an employee somebody had come and reported that there was a man making threats in the bathroom that there was a bomb um and <laughs> so she's she's reporting this story and she's reading through it and then she says that when the the, the police arrived when the the team arrived to go through this home depot make sure everything was okay try to find the bomb they found the the witness and the man who himself had made the supposed threat and what he had actually said he had the threat was be, he had warned people to leave the bathroom um and so that was where the the concern had come from but he had warned people to leave the bathroom because he was he he was going to quote drop a bomb up in here and the reporter is reading this and she says <laughs> She says at one point, yes, I just got that now in her face, watching her face uh, as she's, she goes from, you know, this very professional um, pr reporter reading a news story and then she, she reads it with a straight face and then, and then she looks over at her, I think it's her co-anchor and says, you asked the producer to make me read that, didn't you? You knew. <laughs> she's just, the look on her face is hilarious. So uh, I... The, the reporter's reaction is great. I assume that, uh, you know, this was a real story that obviously she was reporting on it. So it must have been a real story. But I don't know what is funnier. The fact that 
somebody, some guy said he was going to drop a bomb in the bathroom, meaning obviously not a real bomb, but um, a, a bathroom kind of bomb. And it got uh, reported and police came, etc. I mean, I guess better be safe than sorry, right? But the fact that the, the reporter, maybe it was breaking news. It must have been breaking news. It wasn't, re- it wasn't evident in the video if it was breaking news, but it must have been because she clearly hadn't read the story before that she was, she was clearly reading through, reading the teleprompter. And when she got to that part, just the look on her face was absolutely fabulous. Uh, on that note, um, we are going to take our first break of the podcast. Maybe you have time to, um, run to the bathroom, but I don't want to know what happens in there. Okay. I don't need to know. So stay tuned. You're listening listening to the GSMC social media news podcast and I'll be right back. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Welcome back to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. This next story is just one of those examples of the way people are crazy. I mean, yeah, people are crazy, but the way people are just so very fascinating. That's maybe a more tactful way of saying it. And how in this day and age, this era of the internet, where you can take screenshots of interactions that you have with people, all of the fascinatingness, all the all the fascinating characteristics of people go on the internet and people then are able to comment and um, see just how strange the world really is. So enough of my sort of vague vagueness there. Um, I recently saw this story when a friend of mine posted it on Facebook and then it started popping up in other places. Bored Panda actually even did a story on it. So a woman actually demanded that um, an acquaintance acquaintance's dog's name be changed because she wants wanted to name her baby the same name. And the the exchange is just wow it, it's pretty it's pretty crazy i mean you know when you think about baby names there are so many things to think about you, you know is this going to be changed into some horrible nickname or does it rhyme weirdly with the last name or when you say them you know, what, how is it going to sound i mean you, are you naming the baby after someone special are you trying to make a name that is unique or special or has a certain meaning but this interaction is just pretty amazing. So, um, the, the woman whose dog is in question in this story, her name is Janae. And, um, she was pretty astounded by this whole text exchange and ended up posting the screenshots on social media. So her story is that, um, she says out of the blue, she messages me and uh, telling me she's pregnant again. I think she's it's strange that she's telling me since we don't really know each other, but I say, congratulations. I'm super happy for you, etc. She says she's having a little girl. I'm like, that's awesome. She'll be super loved and protected. My nieces are heaps of fun. You'll love having a daughter as well. Then she says, we want to name her Tilly, but it's come to my attention. You have a dog named Tilly. I'd really appreciate you changing your dog's name. Obviously you understand my daughter can't have the same name as a dog. I'm like, WTF. I just say, oh, I see. I don't think it's necessary since I doubt you'll ever see my Tilly and I don't think anyone will notice. She loses it. Says, because I don't have kids, I don't understand. I'm I'm putting her in a terrible position and potentially ruining her unborn daughter's life. There's two question marks and three exclamation points following that. I wrote back and said, I'm not changing the dog's name. Have a good one, mate. And congrats again. Wow. Uh, people then, of course, had all kinds of 
reactions to this as to, you know, well, what's wrong with sharing a name with a dog? And poor Tilly. Um, one, One reply was exactly that. Tilly would like to know what's wrong with sharing a name with a dog. I, uh, what do you what do you think of this, folks? Um, uh, naming a child is tricky, and you know maybe you don't want to name the, the the child the same thing as like maybe your sister's child is, and you, has a name that you really like. Dang it! Well, you're not going to ask your sister to change the name of that child, and a dog of some acquaintance they're not even really friends i think what i read was that they had met at at like mutual friends at like a baptism or something and um but then to say it's come to my attention that your dog's name is uh what i want to name my baby and clearly that can't happen well that's just crazy i mean is she going to track down everybody whose dog's name is tilly and ask them I have a former name whose dog's name is, I have a former neighbor, excuse me, whose dog, dog's name is Tilly. She, wow, I'm just fascinated by this. Uh, lots of people, of course, have, um, have had this conversation. I actually kind of was giving a friend of mine just like silly crap once, not once, a year or so ago when they got a new dog and named their dog the same thing that our dog's middle name is yes our dog has a middle name and i didn't really care i was like but i i did send her a silly text i was like hey my dog is offended and she was like oh my gosh i didn't even think about it ha 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 well so we have a dog we have dogs who have the same name sort of um i don't know just wow uh, at any rate, according to one website, the top five most popular female puppy names in 2019 are Bella, Molly, or Molly, I, Molly with a Y or an I E, Coco, uh, Luna, and Lucy. This year, male pups are mostly called Bailey, Charlie, Max, Buddy, and Cooper. All of those could be could be human names, frankly. So, wow. Um. I just can't imagine asking someone to change their dog's name. Um, but the, the reactions are pretty, pretty interesting, ranging from the, the reasonable to the, wow, people calm down. Um, <laughs> then, then, then some users actually shared positive stories about what it means to share a name with a dog. I just can't stop thinking about that scene in Indiana Jones where you know, his dad keeps calling him Junior, and and then he says, "We named the dog Indiana." And the one guy says, "You're named after the dog." Well, yeah. So he says he's very. I was very fond of that dog, but uh, as someone who was named after a dog named Tilly, and since become besties with another dog named Tilly, it's great sharing a name with a mutt. <laughs> um, another person said, "My dog has my daughter has the same name as my sister's dog. She's dead now. The dog, not my daughter." Thank you for clarifying. Wow. Actually, she died 30 years before my daughter was born. I think we were safe by then. Um, another comment. We were going to call Rachel Renee, but then my Mr. But then Mr. Doc's then BFF's girlfriend got a dog called Renee. They did not know we were going to call the baby Renee. It never occurred to me to ask them to change the dog's name. Uh, my second husband had a dog named Flynn, which is my son's name. I had a dog named Cooper, which is my grandson's name. We laughed about it. No dog or human names were changed. <laughs> this woman is an idiot. See, that's, that's a little, yeah, that's a little harsh, but, um, my cousin just recently had a baby boy and she named him after her childhood best friend, the family dog. See, I, I uh, wow. I mean, there's a lot of interesting things that happen in the world and because of the internet well now we get to read all about them things that might have been sort of minor have become not so minor anymore at any rate let's move on from that silly crazy weird fascinating story of strangeness and take our second break of the podcast when we come back to stories that um, restore my faith in humanity as opposed to the story that we just talked about. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC social media news podcast and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. 
There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. For the break, we are going to turn our attention to um, s- stories that have gone viral for nicer reasons. The first is that um, sisters have honored their dad with um, a rather funny obituary, including the line, he loved not wearing pants at home. I have an interesting thought process when it comes to obituaries. I have worked in... Um, uh, s- several jobs that involved working with families who were in the process of planning funerals and sometimes reading obituaries just made me sad you know it was like the, this person was 90 years old and the only thing that the the family could think about could think to write was you know she loved gardening or something so when i come across unique obituaries the especially ones that clearly show the love of the the love the family has even if it's kind of an irreverent or silly love i i like those kinds of things so um when thomas Tom W.J. Mulligan of Nashua, New Hampshire, died suddenly on July 16th. His two daughters reacted in the best way they knew how, by cracking jokes. Kim Mulligan, 38, of Los Angeles, and Amy Mulligan Shapiro, 33, of Dracut, Massachusetts, said that their father was always a jokester, so it was only fitting that he be honored with a funny obituary. Um... Kim is quoted as saying, Dad didn't play a lot of practical jokes. He was just funny in general. He was totally irreverent, sarcastic, and dry. He loved jokes that were too soon. I think this obituary would fit into that category. Um, The obit, which ran in the Nashua Telegraph, began with the line, Thomas Tom W.J. Mulligan of Nashua has passed away at home in his recliner as he had threatened to for years. In this unique tribute, Mulligan was described by his daughters as a kid from Brooklyn who grew up to live the American dream of marriage, a career, a house in the suburbs, and two pains in the ass kids. He attended Bishop Ford High School. Other human parts, humorous parts included a reference to Mulligan's favorite TV show and his habit of making himself comfortable at home. He loved His love of Doctor Who was only surpassed by his love of not wearing pants at home. He often combined these two interests. Mulligan was 68 at the time of his death, and his passing came as a surprise to his daughters. Um, Kim said it was very unexpected. He was not the picture of health, but he seemed fine. It looks like he went due to a sudden medical event without a lot of pain, and he was in his recliner as he threatened to do. He showed us. Uh, She says, we inherited his sense of humor, and that is a gift. Instead of crying while we were making arrangements, we were cracking jokes. Of course, it doesn't mean we aren't incredibly sad, but it's definitely what he would have wanted. The obituary does end with a typical list of who the deceased is survived by. For Mulligan, that includes his wife, Iris Mulligan. I wonder what she thinks of the obituary. His favorite daughter, Kim Mulligan, and his other daughter, Amy Shapiro. Kim was the one who wrote the obit. Um, And then on Saturday, friends and family gathered to say their goodbyes. Uh, Kim then said he would not have wanted us to grieve terribly for him. We did not want to wear black to the funeral. We had a party where people told hilarious stories about him, and we had a whiskey toast in his honor. She said humor definitely helped us to get through this. So clearly they loved their dad, and clearly they loved his sort of 
wacky sense of humor and they definitely wrote an obituary that showed his personality, which I appreciate. And then finally, um, our last story is about a way that social media is actually helpful. Um, it, it can be helpful in a lot of ways, but recently one woman has been overwhelmed by the benevolence and kindness of strangers after hundreds responded to a request to find one specific dress. I actually saw this on, I believe, Facebook a while back and thought it was a very sweet story. Um, Deborah Price posted the request on Twitter and explained that her friend, quote, has a daughter with autism who can only wear this particular dress. She also asked people not to be judgy because sometimes people can't cope with certain stuff and it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Um, so the little girl, as, as stated, is autistic. She currently has a favorite dress, which she does insist on wearing practically all of the time. And that can be that can be complicated when you are trying to, you know, make sure that dress stays relatively clean. Um, but uh, people on the spectrum, of course, have certain certain comforts that they need around them to make things feel more in control. And for this little girl, apparently right now, that is this dress. The girl's name is Elsie and she's super attached to the dress. Deborah, who is a friend of Elsie's mom, took her um, quest for this dress to Twitter in the hopes of possibly buying it off someone. Uh, they were hoping to find other sizes so that Elsie could continue to wear the dress as she grew. She um, wasn't really expecting the reaction that she got from this request. So she, her original post, as I said, friend's daughter only wears this dress. There's a picture of the dress and it is a, a gray dress with a rainbow um, heart kind of cracked down the middle a little bit. Um, the uh, actually and the the brand that used to carry the dress actually responded to the the tweet um they are next um and at next official hey deborah we have dropped this item from our range but we'd still like to help get this item for your friend's daughter we can't guarantee it but we will try our very best to contact the supplier and see if we can produce a few more batches of this dress if you can, could you ask your friend who is searching for this dress to contact us? We can arrange for the relevant team to start sor to sort something out for them, which is amazing. I mean, that's wonderful. Um, after just one day, Deborah shared the entire story, which is really very sweet. She posted, stop the clock, all in caps. Yesterday, I put a tweet out asking people if they had this next dress from three years ago because my friend um, at Mouse Makes... I think that's what it says at yeah, um, mouse or moose. There's no E has a daughter with autism who can only wear that dress. I ask people not to judge because in the scheme of things, it doesn't matter. Does it? She said she'll eventually grow out of her fascination with this dress or not. Who cares? It doesn't matter. It would just give her and her mom a bit of breathing space and make the dress stress less. Well, you know how Twitter is generally a bit of a bear pit these days. Well, it wasn't yesterday. Something lovely happened. People started to retweet it to look for the dress. Some people found a link on eBay for a top in the same fabric. Some offered to make another dress, but it wouldn't have worked because she needs this particular distressed jersey textile designer face. Um, even at Next Official, with their great big corporate office and profit margins to watch, said they'd speak to the suppliers this week and see if there are any fabric left to run up to run up another small batch of dresses for Kate's daughter. In the end, one lady said her daughter had an age 16 one and she's sending it to us. It'll be too big, but it doesn't matter. It'll be okay if she needs this dress for a few more years. Another lady has an age 10 one and she is sending it to us. It's a little small, but um, my friend's daughter can wear it at home, meaning that her other one can be worn when she's out and about. And then the most amazing tweet, stop the call, stop the clock. A girl called Mila found her age 12 dress, which will be perfect. And she said to her mom that she would send it to us. I told the mom to tell Mila how kind she is. She's given my friend some breathing space and made her daughter's day too. Not only that, but she's said, I can share this story. And there is a picture of the young lady holding up her, um, her, 
not her version, her, her dress that she is going to send to this family. Um, she said uh, that the little, that Mila did say she can share this story because I think it totally restores your faith in human nature. Absolutely bowled over by the kindness of strangers. Massive thanks to each and every one of you from me. And uh, she tagged again Elsie's mom. And huge thanks to the two girls who have chosen to send their dresses. You're amazing and your mums are pretty amazing too for raising such lovely daughters, but mostly you're great because you've made a little girl really happy to continue to be in her favorite dress. And there are a couple of pictures of Elsie with her younger sibling and she is wearing her favorite dress. Um, There are, of course, then the expected comments. Most people were very, you know, overwhelmed by this it does. It honestly it does restore my faith in humanity a little bit. Uh, lots of people say that they cried happy tears. Um, one one woman posted that she is a teacher and had a student who would only wear the same leggings every day, and it was really hard. You know, her mom washed them for her every night. Uh, so you know, these things do matter. It, it is important. It's not just a small child being stubborn or being spoiled sometimes sometimes we need these things in life that are comforting and appropriate and it's it's important to understand when we have we encounter differences so thanks twitter for restoring my faith in humanity and i hope that elsie enjoys having multiple versions of her dress so that she can wear them for some time to come. It is time to wrap up this episode of the GSMC social media news podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. Join me again next time so we can find out what's been trending in the world. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program